Okay, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Rolling Out Star Studio here from the studios live in Atlanta, Georgia. We are joined by a very, very special guest today. I'm Rashad Milligan, as always. And I feel a bit underdressed. I feel a bit <laughs> under like, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just, oh, okay. Well, yeah, no, you're good. Well, we have Rial Downs in the building. Rial, how you Hi. feeling today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I can't complain. I can't complain. Busy day, as you know. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, you might be a little familiar with busy days on, on this day of February 1st, first day of Black yes, History Month. Yes, yes it is. First, so look at how look at how we starting it. We starting off working. Off strong. Look at two black people working. Now. <laughs> but working uh and talking. Exactly. You're doing press day, but you're going directly into the screening tonight for yeah. your new uh lifetime production. Yes. And uh it's about you being abducted or someone's being abducted in the yes. movie. So what's a little bit more about what's going on yeah. with this production and uh your character Carlisha? Yes, it's actually a, a true story. Um, it's about this woman named Carlisha Gaither, who, when she was, I believe, around my age, was um, just walking home from a family function, and she got abducted right off the street um, and stuffed in a car and and taken and assaulted and all types of not great things, obviously. Um, but because of her kind of um, the keen way she went about strategizing, she was able to actually escape um, and send clues out to people of where she was and 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 so that they could track her and, and free her. So. Yeah, it's pretty inspiring. Pretty intense stuff. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, like you got kind of like your big break in America and things like that. First of all, mm. how was how was the six? How was growing up in the six? For y'all that don't know, she is from Toronto. So, yeah. you know, just how was it growing up in the six? How's Canada? Mm-hmm. What's the culture like versus America? Yeah. Um, I love growing up in Canada, uh, to be honest. Toronto specifically, it's like the most multicultural city in the world, I believe, if that's still true. And I could really feel that. Like, um, although LA is also diverse, like it was just different growing up with like so many different cultures, so many different foods, people. I always went to alternative schools. So I feel like it definitely shaped who I was in a way. And um, I got to to kind of settle into who I was before coming out there, which I, I loved. Um, it's a fun city. If you have, haven't been to the six, you should definitely you gotta, give it gotta a go visit, to the it's, six. It's a great place. I, I have to ask the basic Toronto questions for it. <laughs> have you met Drake? Do you know Drake? Have you ever been to Drake's house? I know. I knew it was <laughs> yeah, going to be about Drake. I was like, well, here it comes. <laughs> I have not, but my sister's actually on Degrassi, on the newer version. Wow. So there's a little connection there. And then I think my mom, like before he was famous, um, and he was just coming out with mixtapes and yeah. stuff, and no one knew who he was yet. She like went to a party with him. Um, not with him, but he was at the party. Yeah, and the then party. like there were whispers about, oh my God, this kid from Degrassi has this like mixtape. And people were like, ah, oh, no, that won't be coming either. <laughs> well, there you go. So. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. shout, shout out to Drake. Shout out to the Six. Shout out Drake. Toronto's amazing. Like we went right after the Raptors won. Oh, the wow. championship. that must have been. Yeah. Cra- I heard that. I wasn't there for that, but yeah. I heard that must have been crazy. Yeah, no, no. It was just like my first time in the city and mm-hmm. first time in the country. So it was like, mm-hmm. Just figuring it out and stuff. It was pretty yeah. cool. I, I liked it. Nice little city. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, but going off of that, okay. Mm. So your first big break, going back to that. Oh yeah. Uh Nickelodeon Henry Danger. Um, I guess, you know, just growing up obviously as a as a child star. Mm-hmm. Um, how is it making that transition from another basic question that child stars get asked? <laughs> but you know, uh mm. going from that to a serious young adult role now where you're playing someone who was abducted. You know, it's like yeah. serious stuff versus like uh, Dan Schneider, right? Uh, humor, but <laughs> yeah, totally, totally different beat. So I understand the question. I mean, it's weird. It's like you know, you graduate off the show and you're like, okay, now what? You don't really know what to expect. You could go into more comedy. You could do something serious. But I think what what grounded me in being able to do some more serious roles is I always I started off doing serious roles. Mm. Like when I was a kid, I did a lot of like you know, Four Brothers and Best Man Holiday and like things that were more serious. So I feel like I always had that in my background a little. I actually had to kind of morph my acting style to be more comedic oh, yeah. because I wasn't originally doing any of that. So um, I feel like I've fallen, I've I've been able to kind of default back to like, oh yeah, this is how I used to kind of do things. So it's not too difficult, luckily. A random question now. Do you remember the first time you cussed for acting in front of your mother? <laughs> That's a good question. Wait, I don't think... I don't think I do. I mean, I probably because I probably cuss in front of her in real life first, to be <laughs> honest. So think of that. Oh, but I do. It's still nerve wracking that like the F word specifically, if I had yeah. to say it in a script, I definitely like she told me before. She's like, why are you whispering it? Like, I don't know. It's just like <laughs> feels weird to do. So yeah. still working out those kinks. 
No, the, but do you remember, I guess, like the first time you had to do it in a production, in a, mm. a movie series, and then like maybe you watched it with your mom. Like, mm. do you remember that specific moment? Like if I, like saying a swear word or yeah. something? Hmm. I don't, I honestly don't think, uh, she's sitting on she's the side no. here. She, yeah, but, she's saying but, no But correct right me if I'm wrong, I don't think I've had a role where I've really been like, da, 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 you know, swearing and all that stuff. I know I had that one, I did this one like, uh, um, in-person audition where they had, had a couple swear words in and they're like yeah just go for it like just give more and yeah. like keep swearing and uh, <laughs> I know she was outside so I don't know maybe you overheard that one but <laughs> 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 um, and I was hesitant about that because I was like Ooh, they're wanting me to just go for it and say everything here but yeah your mom seems pretty cool how, yeah. how was like how was like your life growing up like you say um you talked about your older sister mm -hmm. being on the newer Degrassi and stuff like that. You guys yeah. grew up, obviously, you know, just throwing plays and stuff, everything around the house, mm -hmm. you know, but like, just how was it? Like, you got a cool mom, a sister that was like on the same wavelength of you. Yeah. Like, just how was it growing up? Yeah, it was honestly, I had a very good childhood, which I'm grateful for. Um, pretty close to my family. And we just had a lot of fun. Like my sister and I would always make plays. And like before we were even professionally acting, we would always like make plays and skits and perform it for my mom's friends when they would come over. Um, lots of drawing. Like I do a lot of visual art and like fashion designing and stuff. And I've always done that. Um, lots of birthday parties. My mom was really good at, at throwing and <laughs> good birthday parties. What was your favorite birthday party? I'm going to cut you over there. Oh my gosh, yeah, favorite, yeah. Oh my gosh, probably. Okay, we did this huge thing in our building one time where um, I don't even know how I had the friends for this because I don't think I would now, but <laughs> regardless, um, there was like a bouncy house and I was very excited for that part. So bouncy house and like water balloon fights and cake, another favorite. So probably that one where we had all these like different activities and things going on for people to engage. So your birthday is in like the warm months. Yes, yes. July. Oh, well, you guys are in L.A. anyway, so it don't even matter. Know, it like, don't even matter. Same <laughs> your thing. birthday could be now, and then you guys are bouncy house, water balloons, <laughs> yeah. pool party. Right. You know? <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Cool, cool. That's what's up. Do you remember what year that was? How old you turned? Oh, my gosh. I, I know I was pretty young, so I'm assuming like six, seven, maybe? That's my guess. That's my guess. Okay. Mom confirmed, deny. All right, all right, six, seven, <laughs> bouncy house. She said, I do this every year. I can't yeah. keep up. <laughs> she can't give up. Man, shouts out to your mom, man. Guess that role of that part of life that you didn't know before you took the role. Mm, like about her. No, no, no. Like, oh. uh, just in general of mm. like black women going missing or yeah. being abducted or things to look out for as a young woman in general in America or in the world. Absolutely. I feel like I had been very, very naive leading up to that point. And I, you know, I don't even go outside much, to be honest. So I, I just was <laughs> never even thinking about something like that happening. And I didn't know the specific statistics around it. So to to have to play it and like go to those places mentally and do those thought experiments, it's like, oh, wow. I realized like my mom and I had a lot of conversations about it and realizing how real that is and that it is something that could happen to me um, that I hadn't been taking precautions for before. So it definitely makes me more cautious. It makes me feel like my family members, my close friends, especially other young black girls, it's like definitely intensifies the concern for me and makes me want to just spread awareness, which is why I did this role. So that we can all stay safe and and know of this. You had a, a million followers at like the age of sixteen. Now yeah. at twenty two, going to twenty, you have three million followers. Knowing that you have that many eyes on you at all times, how does that make kind of like how was growing up for you? Mm -hmm. um, just like and then you know your family, you know what yeah. I'm saying of just like going out and and just kind of doing regular kid things. How was that for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it definitely changes it, uh, specifically because I was working from like age 11 slash 12 to like 18. So I never had a, like an in-person high school experience or anything like that. So in those ways, it's, 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 a, it's, a, different, it's a different growing up experience for sure. Um, I personally, I try to stay off social media as much as I can, just cause I think that like we can never fully understand that outreach. Like I, I can't even comprehend what like being in a room with all of those, you know, <laughs> 3 million people, like, like it's, it's just a hard thing to comprehend as a human being, I guess. So I try to like, distance myself from that as much as I can. Of course, still interacting as much to show my appreciation. But um, yeah, I feel like that's how I stay kind of normal on that front, just living my daily life and, and leaving that as like a separate part. So it, um, I guess who keeps you grounded in that of knowing that like social media isn't real? Because I feel like you've always had a good grasp on that mm -hmm. for like as long as, you know, I've followed your career or seen yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so so where, where, where did that come from? Like, where did that groundness come from? Humble. Oh, that's nice. I mean, I feel like, honestly, I feel like I've just always been 
like that. Um, I guess if there's someone, my, my sister and I are very similar. So we have a lot of conversations and just talk a lot and bounce ideas off of each other a lot. So she's like that intellectual person that I go to for those conversations. But um, in general, I just feel like I've, I've I like always tried, had to find my own way to that, to that stuff. Cause it can, it become a lot. And especially when I was gaining those followers, it's like, it's new, it's exciting, mm -hmm. you know, but I had to ground myself myself and be like, okay, wait a minute, you know, let's understand like what these different worlds are and whatnot. How do you adjust from, um, from the world of media that was like cable based and heavy cable to like mm. what it is now, where it's digital streaming? Yeah, I think about that a lot. Um, you mean as an actor? Or as a yes, viewer? as oh. an actress. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, there are more roles out there, so that's nice. But I guess, I guess you just kind of have to go for whatever. I mean, I, I guess I had always like when I reached a certain age, Netflix was already a thing. So as far as I've been like sentient and conscious, like streaming has been like in the zeitgeist really big. So I guess I don't even remember like what stuff has like been like you know like i feel like i haven't even watched cable tv and i don't even know how well, long. well that's the thing it was like okay so henry danger like mm -hmm. from from my generation you yeah. know like i'm we're like the millennials and stuff like that mm -hmm. henry danger was like the first show on nickelodeon where it was kind of like okay we're a little too old to be watching Nickelodeon. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so it was like the Different next era. generation yeah and um so you know i didn't know how many people were still watching cable TV and following Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, things like that. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you had a million followers. Right. So Henry Danger was popping for a lot of people and, and yeah. it, it's still relevant and everything like that. So I just wanted to know, like from you mm -hmm. being in it and having a successful career and sustainable and like being able to adjust and go here and go here and go here throughout all of those changes, like just kind of like what, what was that like? And what were you surprised when you were on Nickelodeon mm -hmm. on like, I don't watch cable TV. But like obviously this many people do because I do get recognized at KCAs right, and that's uh, true. all these other places and stuff. Yeah. Um wait, sorry, this was yes, the question. Yes, yes. The question, I'm sorry, because I went no, you're around good. No, and I, I was just like... gave a statement. <laughs> so so the question was, were you ever surprised about how often you were still recognized mm -hmm. and all the recognition you got despite being on cable TV because you didn't watch cable TV? Right. That's a good question. I guess um I guess I was, but you kind of get prepared for it. Like, as you were saying, the online aspect, like you kind of see, oh, I guess it is reaching all these people. Like I am seeing myself tagged in all these things. Okay, so people know who I am. So I guess that kind of prepared me for things like the KCAs or whatever, but it's definitely still surprising. Like I remember, I guess the first few times I went, like actually having a lot of people like crowding you, asking for pictures. Like it's, it's always yeah. for me gonna be like, whoa, what? you know? <laughs> I don't think that ever goes away. Cause yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy and you forget because I'm just like in my day to day. I'm not thinking person. about, oh, all these people might be watching me right now or whatever, you know. Um, but now I think Henry Danger is on Netflix. So I think. Uh, so, yeah. So then it's like, oh. So yeah, the kids them. watch. Oh, yeah. The kids for sure watching that. Yeah. On the iPads and everything and stuff <laughs> like that. Kids. How do you deal with people like if ever, people ever come to you and like maybe maybe trauma dump of like, I grew up with you, you my childhood. <laughs> like when I see you, I see my childhood like. How do you kind of deal with that with strangers? Because you're like, you're dumping a lot on me and I'm just trying to pump gas. Like, how do, how do you <laughs> deal with that? funny. Them? Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it, honestly. Um, yeah, it's an honor to be like a part of someone's childhood or life, you know? So, and you don't get to hear it very often. Like, I don't think it's often that I get that. So when I do, like, I'm just like, wow. Like, I'm, I'm quite touched, <laughs> to be honest, you know? It's like a special thing to be able to do and to be able to have that outreach, like, as an actress is, it's a unique experience. Like not a lot of people have that type of, you know, impact on others. So I appreciate it. And I'm grateful. Who did you look up to growing up? Mm. Oh gosh. So many people like actors or just yeah. anybody. It, it, it could be anybody. It's black history month. Right, so a black, black, black person. You looked yes, up yes, to. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like last time I said, I wanted to work with Viola Davis really bad. Cause she's just inspiring. Um, Lupita Nyong'o, of course. I love Lakeith Stanfield. Um, Denzel Washington, just every, I don't know. I could like list everybody to be honest. Kiki Palmer. Okay. Grew up Kiki, watching her. Yeah. Akila and the B. Yes. I saw it up yeah. front. Um, so loved that Zendaya, um, just so many people and, and artists like Basquiat and whatnot. Like I'm very into art. So, yeah. Um, on that, that aspect too, but I'm just inspired by anyone doing cool things. Oh yeah. Pharrell is great. Um, Childish Gambino. Like, oh. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I just love anyone who like has their hand in a lot of different creative pots, you know, 
that's kind of what I'd like to do. So Donald, Donald, that's my dog. Mm-hmm. You, you, you kicked off a whole nother thing. We only have a couple more minutes. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, like with Donald, um, when, when did you first like, kind of discover him? And then, you know, like uh, what, what's your favorite project? from? Oh, um, I discovered him watching Community actually and like yeah my sister and I would watch that when we were young I got her like this Troy and Abed in the morning yeah. sure like we were just like big big fans they're so funny so that's like where I started with him which I think is where like most people started with yeah, him obviously yeah. and then his music came out so then I was listening to his yeah. music and I was loving that um Atlanta I haven't seen all of Atlanta yet I'm just yeah. gonna admit that but um yeah and then from there just so I feel like I was like really there from the beginning mm-hmm. of, of his career I'm just always been a big fan how does Atlanta the show compare to Atlanta the city Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I'm seeing a pretty different part of Atlanta than he was, <laughs> probably. <laughs> like, I, I just be sitting in my hotel. I'm not really just out there like that. But um, I feel like it, it looks similar for sure. Yeah. And like, I like the the vibe of the people that he brought um, that he wrote about. I think is pretty accurate. Like, just the personality. Yeah. That's here. Yeah. I, I was in the show. And, um, oh I was gosh. in the the uh, awesome. the club the club episode the invisible car episode in season one. Wow! So how was that experience? It was cool. It was mad cool because like like he said like Donald was like someone I looked up to since sixth grade. Right. So he was on YouTube. He used to do uh, skits on YouTube in 06 when YouTube first started with Derek Comedy. This group he had in um in college and stuff like that. So I followed him all the way up from there and stuff. And yeah, it was just really cool. We were there all day, like 15 hours and stuff like that. But wow, you cool that's people. Fun. I was like, thank you for everything for the inspiration. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, so sure. someone who's, yeah. yeah. And he's doing the movie. Mm-hmm. The community movie for 50 oh. million. Wait, what? Yeah. They're doing a community movie. They're doing movie? a community oh, movie. Oh my gosh. Six yeah, seasons in the movie. And uh so wow. the whole up was getting Donald on board and they okay. came to negotiation fifty million dollars. So maybe. What? We're talking in a few years, you come back, the Henry Danger movie, and we're talking about, nah, you got to do 100 to get you in the movie. So. Right. <laughs> That's so funny. I guess, what what are you looking forward to? What are your goals? Um, everything like that and for the rest of your career. Oh, gosh. So many things. Like, I feel like I'm a very, like, this is my problem, is being able to focus on something, mm. I guess, because, like, I just have a lot of ideas. Um, I, like, I writing right now so leaving that vague but like hopefully being able to write something and be part of that um my friend and i have this idea for like a little book and um photography i'm very into so maybe on that front doing some things fashion designing so hopefully a line soon just all types of things all types of creative things um are on the horizon so yeah three fashion tips for winter winter 2024 Mm. For winter tips, okay. Well, layer for starters, <laughs> and layering can look really nice too if you like have complementing colors. A nice puffy vest is good. Um, I'm particularly liking those, and it could be faux fur, but like those faux fur hats um, are really cool. Like you know the ones or, yeah. or the headbands. No, I know what you're saying. Like they're, they're really in in style right now. Like the cheetah girls headband is coming yeah, back. Yeah, those. You know mm-hmm. that style from the early 2000s and whatnot. And gloves. I like a good like even layering gloves sometimes. Can yeah, be, can be nice. And those little hand things. Need that uh, it's Toronto is cold, man. It gets yeah, cold. It's really up there. cold. It's really cold. Oh yeah, and those like ankle warmers. Yeah. What are, whatever those are, those can be stylish too. Anything that like is an accessory but also keeps you warm. Oh, glasses I know what you're also about. can keep you warm oh, too, low key. Yeah. So be on that. Mask. When, mask. when they brought out the mask, you'd be like, yeah. "I'm staying safe, but you're really staying warm, keeping yeah, your face warm." It does, yeah, yeah, it literally stops yeah, the wind. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. That mask on. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, cool. Where, where can people uh, watch the movie, check out the movie? Yeah. Uh, everything like that, yes. Um, on Lifetime, on streaming, but I believe it premieres February 10th. So, yes, go watch, go watch. February 10th, make sure you check it out. Make sure you support everything like that, Miss Downs. We appreciate you stopping by so much. Thank you. Where can people follow you on social media, find you, and find out what's going on next with your career, art, fashion, book, right? everything or nothing and we'll see how it goes um (laughs) real downs on instagram and twitter and i think real claire on tiktok all right real downs in the building star studio rashad milligan from rolling out studios in atlanta georgia thank you so much malik for producing this episode until next time please take care of yourselves